Well, good morning, friends, and welcome to Wake Up in the Word. Thanks for joining me this morning. Hey, I've got some good coffee in this cup. Uh, mm, yeah, I had, had to had to wash this cup this morning. It had been, you know, sitting up on the counter here for a couple of weeks. There was some mold growing on the inside of it, but you know what? I did wipe off the outside before I made my coffee in it. Would you think I'm a lunatic or what if I said something like that? But guess what? We may have lives that seem to indicate the same thing. That's what Jesus is going to tell the Pharisees today in our devotional in Matthew chapter 23. Come join us as we look at a most interesting passage of scripture. We're in the middle of those woes where Jesus is calling out the Pharisees for their religious hypocrisy. We get to one of the most interesting verses of it in which we actually have one very important obvious principle being taught but then we have another one being confirmed that you may not have noticed in this particular passage so let's look at both of those in verse 23 jesus says woe to you scribes and pharisees hypocrites you pay a tenth of mint dill and cumin and yet you've neglected the more important matters of the law justice mercy and faithfulness now, hang on, before we read the next sentence, I want you to notice what Jesus is saying. He is actually confirming something when he talks about you pay a tenth of, and he mentions these spices and other things, possessions that they were very faithful to tithe on. Jesus is making reference when he says you pay a tenth to the Old Testament principle of tithing. And most of our churches, folks in the Baptist church in particular, how do we raise the money necessary to do ministry? We ask our members to tithe, to basically look at what they have been given and what their, their income might be and give a tenth of it back to the Lord. Now, the statistics are amazing as to how few people actually do that, but I think many people do at least recognize the principle of giving a percentage when it comes to their giving practices. And that's the base, the tithe upon which you give. And then there are those offerings you might give above that. And sometimes offerings come in all kinds of ways, not just cash, not just money, but sometimes in time and possessions and things that can be given. So, you know, that principle still holds true today. And that's the way the church really operates. It's about a faithful giving of members. Someone is asked, well, did Jesus believe in tithing? Notice how he does not condemn the practice of tithing. What he does condemn is the neglect of things that are just as important as what you're physically giving, in this case, to the temple and, and to Judaism. Because in the next sentence, he said, these things should have been done. In that one phrase, Jesus is actually confirming the tithe and actually uh, saying that the Pharisees were doing the right thing by tithing. These things should have been done, yes, but without neglecting the others. The ideal picture here is that a person who gives to the church and gives to ministry has a heart and a life that reflects what they're giving to. In this case, what he's saying is the Pharisees put on a big show with their gifts, but their life doesn't match they're giving. So listen, you can be a hypocrite in your giving just as you can in anything else. You can give to wonderful ministries and support great causes and show up every time the Red Cross has a blood drive, for example. We'll be having one of those in, in August at our church. Uh, you, know, you, can, you can show up and do all the right things, check off all the boxes, but then inwardly be corrupt and sinful yourself. And that's what Jesus is pointing out in today's passage that is the most hypocritical about these Pharisees. So he says of them, blind guides, you train at a gnat, but you gulp at a camel. So woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. You clean, watch this, the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup so that the outside of it may become clean. So today, Jesus said, hey, yes, it is important that you give as you've been giving, but it's also important that you recognize the inside needs to be clean as well. Matter of fact, it's the inside that is of more importance than the outside. In our commentary today, I want you to listen to some of these notes. Straining at a gnat, 
he said, you, you know, you strain it in that, but you swallow a camel. Uh, it refers to actually passing wine through a sieve in order to remove gnats. That's right. That was something they had a problem with. Can you imagine? Now, for those of us who spent a lot of time in the South, especially South Georgia while we were in Valdosta, uh, living with gnats is just common, right? It's just something, you know, you just learn how to either swat or, you know, you blow them away. You do whatever is necessary because gnats are reality of life. It's the same right here in South Carolina where we live. Just depending on where you go, all of a sudden, all these little tiny creatures start flying around. Can you imagine uh, the folks that were trying to take the wine uh, taking the grapes, turning it into wine, and the wine presses, and then trying to bottle that stuff as they fought off little bitty insects that would try to get in the way and maybe end up in the wine. Well, what you do is you strain it, you filter it the same way we do the, the similar things today. By some of you use cheesecloth or other strainers, commercial strainers, to keep, hold out impurities. But when he refers to this, uh, He's talking about, watch, two unclean animals. <laughs> Both gnats and camels were unclean. Go back and look at the, Le the Leviticus list on that. But the gnat represents the smallest of unclean insects. It's absurd to consider swallowing an animal as large as a camel, of course, while taking much care not to swallow a gnat. So Jesus is actually a comedian again. Many times Jesus mentions things that folks had to be grinning at, and you had to have a little bit of levity in the middle of this uh, sermon about hypocrisy. Uh, can you imagine seeing someone with something as tiny as a gnat just straining at that, but yet then swallowing a camel? Yeah, oh, that's hilarious. Now, the most legalistic in Judaism strained wine and other liquids so as not to swallow inadvertently any unclean insect or the like. Thus, in saying that they swallow a camel, Jesus is pointing out the absurdity of their inconsistency. The most minute item was given full attention while they disregarded the most serious matters of keeping the law. It's implied here also that while giving attention to the petty details of their tradition, they fell into real sin that displeased God. Now, when he called these guys hypocrites because of their outward cleanliness, you know, their outward uh, show, you know, it was really a show where they were putting on the outward airs of being the most religious, the most sanctified and moral people ever. Yet on the inside, they were full of corruption. He uses this coffee cup example, as we have today, to demonstrate how crazy that is. He said they were like people who washed only the outside of a cup while leaving the inside in unclean. And, and, you know, as these Pharisees, with their attention to all this ritual uncleanness, you got to wash your hands just right and do this, that, and the other, but they didn't call you to wash your heart. That's where the hypocrisy came in. So this commentator says that the Pharisees, with their attention to the ritual uncleanness and uncleanliness and the external marks of legal purity, were not able to discern the real uncleanness, which was inside. External righteousness means nothing if the person internally is unclean. So friends, next time you get the cup out and you make sure it's clean, it's good. It's okay to clean the outside. That's a good deal. But you want to make sure it's clean on the inside where all the good stuff is. Hope you got a clean heart today a pure heart. Remember some of the songs we've sung uh, in church through the years, cleanse my heart, oh God. That's what Jesus is trying to point out today. Don't be like the Pharisees. Don't put on a religious show. Instead, make sure that from the inside and then out, from the inside out, that you're clean. That's the way to make sure that it's all done right according to God's word. God bless you. I'll see you right here again tomorrow as we wake up in the word.